The politics stop at the door of the office of Attorney General. Um, President Trump mm -hmm. cannot avoid justice in the great state of New York. Um, and the investigation that we are ongoing is that, that the president, as well as um, some of his children, perhaps inflated his assets uh, so that they can get financial terms for loans and for, and for insurance co coverage. In addition to that, they deflated those same assets for the purposes of evading and or avoiding tax liability. We're all human. I, I've made, I think, 5,000 decisions with the last count. Written decisions, not to mention at a trial where you snap, snap, snap decisions. And there were things that were done that I know were meant to make me look stupid. And, you know, uh, judges admonishing me, telling me to sit down in front of a jury, um, the way they spoke. There was nothing I was doing procedurally or in evidence rules that was wrong. Now, the press covered it that way because the judge made them think and would say things like, you should read the evidence rules. And I'm looking and I'm saying, well, I'm trying to be an ethical lawyer here and respectful. I think that we have a problem with accountability with the Democrat side, and I'm not sure we figured out how to tackle them. We have to. I think President Trump um, would make everything even Stephen when he gets back into office. I think that what we have to deal with is exactly that. We've got we could keep talking about it. I could go on TV every day and talk about how we have White House logs that came out while I was on trial. I'm sitting in the back room and I find out that there were White House logs that Tish James visited the White House. Yeah. Before and after the complaint was filed. What? How was that not on the news? If I didn't have such a loud mouth, people wouldn't hear the truth. So, so I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? How is this possible? And it didn't get covered. It didn't get covered. I mean, Who, is that public info fight right now? Yeah, it's crazy. So I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how do we hold them accountable? Well, these are elected officials. You know, we had people there. We have gag orders being put on us. How is that OK? Yeah. Gag I'm orders on lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine I go to court. I'm your lawyer. And, you and the talk. judge says, ha, but no, no, you can't talk about a couple things here. So we're winning. And I've always tell people, you know, this is the long game. OK, we are in a corrupt system. There's no question about it. So people love to say, look, he's going to get, we're going to go over there and Tish James is going to take the keys to Trump Tower. I think uh, Whoopi Goldberg there and all of them got excited about putting a chain around Trump Tower and mm -hmm. literally were, were taunting. Um, it was a really pathetic sight, actually. And uh, it didn't happen. Why? Because the appellate division read our papers, saw that there are reasons for a stay, saw that it absolutely is ridiculous to have somebody lose an asset while the appellate division hasn't had an opportunity to look at the injustices, look at the decision making that was so flawed. And frankly, the motivation on this case was flawed. She was motivated to bring this case before she was even in office. That's what she ran on, Miss James. So <clears throat> that in itself, selective prosecution happens to be illegal. It shouldn't happen. Um, look, they stated, they dropped it. They said, we're not taking assets. Everything is frozen. Not only, and this is the one thing that nobody talks about. They didn't just say you're not paying that amount of money, which by the way, is almost close to a billion dollars with a bond because you have to pay 10% more. Plus you have to pay interest. The judges said, no, we're stopping everything. You're not enforcing this. You're going to put 175 mil, which is still crazy, in the bank. But we're also not enforcing any decision against the defendants not to be able to work in New York in real estate. We're also not enforcing the decisions against Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McC people that did nothing wrong, that were working for a company and did their job and truly did nothing wrong. Nobody did. Um, and every single part of that decision from Judge and Gorin, that twisted weird, decision. Weird, weird looking guy. He, mm. Every single thing was put on hold. Everything. Mm. While we have the opportunity now to say, this is what I was screaming about outside the courtroom steps every day, you know, so we're on hold and and I mean, we're on hold for an expensive price, but at least we're seeing a little bit of, you know, due process and, and sense. And how did you come up with the 175 million? I don't know. Um, I, ha I have no idea. You know, it wasn't in there. There wasn't any qualification. Yeah. Or call the DNC and ask them. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand how they couldn't see that their overreaching has really hurt them because Donald Trump 
has always been famous. He has always been a very smart businessman, which is why I think he's a very good president. He attacks things from a business perspective, which I think some presidents and some politicians, frankly, do lack mm. that that experience, right? Um, and because of that, they've attacked him so badly that now you've taken a billionaire and made him sympathetic because you're hurt. You're trying to hurt him. It's so obvious that now we've got people from the left, the middles, they're coming to our side and saying, mm -hmm. whoa, this is just too much. Yeah. You know, they're going to do this to me. Exactly. What am I going to do? I don't have Haba outside screaming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? And that's been my message always is, um, you know, they're doing it to him, but they'll do it to us. They'll do it to me, I'm sure. They'll do it to everybody. And that's what scares me. So that's that's really it's the motivation is really not just President Trump. It's America. But look, the reality is he's an incredibly wealthy man. Um, he his wealth, like all wealthy individuals that have intelligence, is being put to work. It's in buildings. It's in real estate. It's in hotels. It's in golf. Um, they're not, you know, whatever they're going to try and do, they forget who they're dealing with, number one. But realistically, Patrick, w what we do have in front of us is really not the civil suits. The civil suits uh, were already done. And if if you, what you're asking, I believe, already happened. We had the Carroll lawsuit. He got hit with an insane, and that, and that was a suit that I obviously did. Um, we had already lost prior, and we have not been heard on appeal on that first loss. This is the 83.3 million. 83.3 million. Right. That was the first one. Right. Which actually turns out to be 91 million when you look at it with the bond, okay, with the 10%. You have to put 10% on top. People think you put 10% into the court. Decrease. You put the entire amount plus 10% into the appellate division. So it's a number that the court gives plus 10%, plus the interest on the bond, plus whatever they get in fees. It's plus, plus, plus. So we already got that hit. I did that trial two weeks after uh, Letitia James' trial ended. I was on that trial for four months. The, Judge and Gorin waited to put his decision until after the jury came out with Carol. So we had that happen. We had that happen. It was $91 million. And then Tish James, her original complaint, if you look, was $250 million. In the middle of the trial, towards the end, she changes it and says, now I want more. Not because the facts were bad. Frankly, the facts were good. Deutsche Bank came, took the stand, said he was a whale of the client. We actually wanted him because we wanted his connections. Zurich still insures us. You know, all these things. The judge didn't care. Tish asked for more. He gave exactly what she wanted. There was no consideration for witnesses or facts or law. It's all crazy and How corrupt. Did come up with these so problems? it was 91, then 375. They're out of thin air. Their <clears> own <throat> expert said, even if we looked at the what this judge is saying is an overvalue. Okay. He's also saying Marilago is 18 million. Yeah. Okay? So sure, if you think Marilago is worth 18 million, well, there's about a, over a billion dollars of, of over. It's ridiculous. There is no way. If Marilago is 18 million, we should all buy it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and flip it and yeah. we'll, all be, we'll all be worth hundreds of millions of dollars I mean it's crazy but if you look at it that way yeah that was already planned Patrick that's what they did they did 91 yeah. then they did 375 375 becomes more like 600 million so they were trying to take it by the way remember Tish asked for his statements asked for financials she changed the number based on what cash he had it's just it's there's zero percent question in my mind that's what happened. So, so Lena, I think that we have a problem with accountability with the Democrat side, and I'm not sure we figured out how to tackle them. We have to. I think President Trump um, would make everything even Stephen when he gets back into office. I think that what we have to deal with is exactly that. We've got we could keep talking about it. I could go on TV every day and talk about how we have White House logs that came out while I was on trial. I'm sitting in the back room and I find out that there were White House logs that Tish James visited the White House. Yeah. Before and after the complaint was filed. What? How was that not on the news? If I didn't have such a loud mouth, people wouldn't hear the truth. So, so I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? How is this possible? And it didn't get covered. 
It didn't get covered. I mean, Who, is that public go. info fight right now? Yeah, it's crazy. So I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how do we hold them accountable? Well, these are elected officials. You know, we had people there. We have gag orders being put on us. How is that okay? Yeah. Gag we'll orders on lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine I go to court. I'm your lawyer, and, you and the talk. judge says. Uh, but no, no, you can't talk about a couple things here. It's crazy. And there were things that were done that I know were meant to make me look stupid. And, you know, uh, judges admonishing me, telling me to sit down in front of a jury, um, the way they spoke. There was nothing I was doing procedurally or in evidence rules that was wrong. Now, the press covered it that way because the judge made them think and would say things like, you should read the evidence rules. And I'm looking and I'm saying, well, I'm trying to be an ethical lawyer here and respectful. Um, but I can't, I, you, you can't really talk back to a judge, right? Especially yeah. when a judge is telling you they're going to throw you in jail, um, which happened on the Carroll case. Imagine in a civil case, because I objected to a PowerPoint slide that I wanted in, and he said is not coming in. The PowerPoint slide literally proved everything I had said in the case. It said that, look, if somebody tweets something and President Trump doesn't acknowledge it for five hours, but they're getting hate from trolls, how can you blame President Trump for defamation? That slide was taken out. I was not allowed to bring it in. And the jury couldn't see it. But the judge, the way they do it, he did it in front of the press. He didn't do it in chambers. He does it so that people start to have this narrative. Oh, she's not a good lawyer. Oh, she's not bright. Oh, she's not this and that. So her being on the case is different than Fannie Willis. Okay. So Tish James actually doesn't do the cases. Okay. She's a figurehead effectively, right? So she's got a team that we dealt with for three years. And that team tried the case. She would show up. She would sit in the back. She would have her coffee. She wasn't really trying the case. Now, she was giving the directives. She was given the directives, much like Merrick Garland or of any of them, right? Yeah. But does, did we argue selective prosecution a hundred times? Did we argue that she persecuted, prosecuted President Trump to get into office, said it before, that it was improper, that she was unethical, all those things? A hundred times. Was it covered? No. Just like, her at the, just like her going to the White House to visit. Uh, the that's all for today. Thank you. If you want global news to keep you up to date on any new developments, Please subscribe our channel and forward our content with your friends on social media and email. Thank you very much for keep supporting me. Stay safe. Be blessed. Namaste. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America.